Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our AV8B again and today we're going to look at vertical takeoff and landing. So if we don't have a runway or the runway is damaged or whatever, for some reason we can't take off with stall or a conventional takeoff, then we're going to have to go for the vertical option. So the first thing to point out before we go anywhere is to make sure that we are underweight. Basically, if we open the arming screen up here, our maximum takeoff weight for vertical is 23,000 pounds. And you can see our maximum, our gross weight, sorry, here at the moment is 22,500 pounds. So we can just about uh, lift off with vertical takeoff and landing as we are now. Uh, let's start getting set up. So we're going to want full flaps, stall mode. Ensure that we're in master mode stall. Make sure that our water is to take off up there. The items on the HUD that we're going to be interested in, in our path vector here, our which is at here, uh, that tells us which way we're actually facing, that tells us which way we're going. Our nozzle position here, our nozzle position here is a backup, our flaps position here, and our vertical velocity here, and our normal IAS velocity there, our engine speed there. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase our engine power to probably above 100% in this case because we are going to be so heavy and we're going to start to lift off. We're going to have our nose, nose, nozzles pointed down at 85 degrees. And it's very important at this point to ensure that we have neutral trim. I can check that just by pressing right control and H and checking that our trim is in the center there. Uh, now when we have lifted off we do have some control of the plane obviously we've got no airfoil control from the wings but we do have thrust nozzles in the wings as well as the main thrust nozzles and possibly even the no nose and tail I'm not actually sure but we will have some limited control of the plane once we've started taking off and we've got a decent vertical velocity then it's gear up and to um, just get that done early then what we're going to start doing is a ensure that our flight path uh, sorry our path vector here is above the horizon to make sure that we're not heading downwards and we're going to start ever so slowly moving the nozzles backwards uh, very slowly and so that's going to start moving us forwards and over the course of I don't know maybe 30 seconds we're going to transition from hover into level flight while increasing altitude as we're increasing altitude once we've got a little bit of speed up we're going to rotate upwards with our aft control stick and ensure that our witch's hat here is going to align with our ideal climb um, markers which will be up here somewhere but i'll show you that better at the time so once we've got our nozzles down to about 30 per, uh, degrees we're going to put our flaps up to auto because as we move our nozzles further and further back we have uh, are at risk of damaging the flaps unless we put them in, in auto the only other thing I'd like to point out quickly is that we do have water on board this plane. We've got 500 pounds of water and it's used for cooling the engine in high load situations like we're about to do. Uh, and it's important uh, that we don't let that run too low. That will run while we're, that will be running out while we're doing our vertical takeoff. So we'll keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't get too low or we risk blowing up our engine. Uh, and that's another reason why we don't want to wait around too long uh, when we're in the hover state. We want to transition as soon as possible. So let's get on with it. Nozzles 85%, sorry 85 degrees, if I can get that right. Uh, power up, and let's see when she wants to take off. So we've got 70, 80, 90, 100, and she's still not taking off. 105, 106, she's taking off. I'm going to start eking the throttles forward, uh, the nozzles forward now to try and get some forward momentum. I'm going to gear up now, we've got some decent velocity. I'm going to start putting the nose up. Okay, we can get our witch's hat, which is where we're pointing towards these uh, idle climb markers, which we'll do now. We're just about climbing. You see our vertical velocity on the right there. Uh, we are now going to start moving our nozzles even further forward. Uh, sorry, backwards. And you can see our, our um, speed is starting to increase now. 40, 50 knots. Our path vector is coming out to meet us. And we can start accelerating even further now. Nozzles forward, nozzles forward, nozzles forward. Above 100 knots. We're starting to get some lift in the wings now. Now we're down to 30 nozzle. We're going to move our flaps up one. We can move all the way up to zero nozzles now. And we're into normal flight. And let's level out. Let's come off the power back down to cruise. Trim out. Start setting ourselves up with nav. We're going to take our water off. We're going to check how much we... Whoops. Check how much we used there. Uh, we used... Uh, Wow, we used almost all of it there. We've only got 160 pounds left because we took so long and we were so heavy doing that. So um, that is something to look out for. 
Um, and that's it really, uh, just getting a normal fl flight configuration and there we go. Right, next we're going to turn around and going for a landing. Welcome back, we're in the air now, circling around the runway and there are some things that I need uh, to tell you about as they're very relevant to vertical takeoff and landing. So the first thing we're going to notice is that because we were so heavy on that takeoff we used a lot of water. Um, the water was there to cool our engine and if we didn't do that the engine would have overheated and would have exploded and now the only problem is we've got very little water left now that was on purpose because I'm going to show um, a little bit of um, engine maintenance and what we can do to ensure that we'll have enough water for landing so in fact I'm just going to pause that so the reason that we had to use all that water is because we had to rev our engine past 100% the Pegasus engine on this plane can actually go past 100% and all the way up to about 112 or 114% over rev and when it's above that 100 percent it's going to use water to have to keep it cool or it might, might even be slightly below under 100 percent it uses it but right up at the top there and the reason is because we were so heavy we had to use that much power um, now if we went to do a vertical landing now we would have to use all that power again and we would run out of water overheat our engine and die now when i say our engine um, overheat it doesn't actually explode uh, what happens is it goes into a self-preservation mode and it, uh, it basically refuses to be revved past a certain point um, which means basically you will lose power and so if we went in to try and land now with this amount of water we would basically it would go into limiting mode and we would run out of power and we would just fall and crash so what we're going to have to do is configure ourselves now so that we uh, don't need to use any water or not very much water at all and what we're going to do is make ourselves lighter now uh, we haven't got any stores on but we are nearly full of fuel so so the thing to do now is to get light we've got seven thousand pounds of fuel and uh, we are going to dump that so we're going to unpause now two switches here and this is all relevant to um uh, vertical landing so we've put these switches forward whoops put these switches forward and that's going to be dumping now so this number is going to be coming down quite fast and it's going to come down i think it's going to stop at 2800 as a default which will be uh, plenty for us uh, enough for us to land with but not enough that it'll make us so heavy that we need to go past 100 uh, percent rpm and start using all this water so i'm just going to fast forward now until we get down to that amount Okay, so we got down to 2,800 and is there the switches, although there's, oh, you see they've uh, knocked back uh, automatically. So they've cancelled themselves, so they're no, no longer dumping fuel. Right, so we're going to get in a left-hand circuit of the airfield at 300 knots, 1,000 feet, and then we're going to pause and have a quick talk about our landing. Okay, we're at circuit speed and altitude more or less now. Uh, so the first thing to point out is that whenever we land with good visual conditions like this we're going to land from a circuit either left or right we're on the downwind now what we'll do is wrap round in the left base leg turn into a final and then down on the final approach that base leg turn is where we're going to do most of the preparation for the final approach which will be getting us down to speed getting us to the correct altitude for the beginning of the approach preparing all of the surfaces you know your flaps your gear your HUD mode stuff like that then the actual approach itself we're going to come down on a more or less kind of standard airfield approach of about three degrees uh, basically we're going to come in to begin with um, as a stall landing a short takeoff and landing type landing uh, I've done a video on this if you want to know more but we're just going to come in like that and we're going to come in at about 90 knots something like that until we're reaching uh, just before the threshold of the runway then we're going to start uh, moving our nozzles backwards, slowing ourselves down and, and transitioning to a hover just above the runway. We're going to slowly uh, work our way down then and land more or less vertically. Now before we do that, I've just got to quickly explain about OT time and then I will get on and do it. So I'm going to unpause here. I'm going to click menu here. Uh, sorry, menu here, engine here. This engine tap here gives us uh, an OT time. Now, at the typically at the time of filming this video, it's currently bugged and not working, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. Here is our OT time. That is the amount of time that we can spend above 100% throttle. Uh, it's currently on 96, minus 96 seconds, showing that for some reason it's not working at the moment. It usually does work. Uh, usually you start out a flight with 80 or 90 seconds, I can't remember. So you can spend that many seconds, essentially, above the um, above 100% if that gets down to naught seconds but so if i use 90 seconds worth of above 100 percent and it gets down to zero seconds then it's going to put on again the rpm limiter and i'm going to not be able to max out the engine basically so i'm saying this because at this point if i'm going for a vertical 
uh, landing as well as checking our H2O and our weight. We also got to check our OT time to make sure that we've got the red amount um, of ability to go above 100% throttle. Right, okay, so let's get on with it. Unpause, turn our controls on, keep a circuit height. We're going to extend a little bit further uh, past the end of the runway just so that we can get a little bit more talking time. Uh, start prepping HUD mode in V style. Turn our water to landing. That'll do, I reckon. We're going to start turning in now. Throttle down. We're going to start working our nozzle back slowly. Our flaps can already go back to uh, auto to the first stage. We have to start adding some power on to compensate for that. We're below 250 knots. Our gear's going to come out now. Landing. Gear. But I keep Landing. looking over our left shoulder to double check that we're going to end the turn uh, essentially in line with the runway. We want to keep our path vector on the horizon. We want to keep it about a thousand feet. We don't want to lose any altitude yet. We're going to have to start turning tighter. More down nozzle. We're going to work our way down to 50 degrees down nozzle. Turn tighter still. More power. More less. Uh, more nozzle angle. Coming round nicely. Nozzle is now down to 50 percent. Uh, sorry, 50 degrees. Keep saying that. We can now go to full flaps. So full flaps down, and the flaps will come down in a second once we've got a low enough speed. Right, going to trim this out here. I'm going to come down on the power a bit. We're still a little bit fast. Okay, now the flaps are coming down. Now the drag's really starting. Right, next thing I'm going to do is ease off the power, trim the bird up, so that um, so that the witch's hat's not too low. We're going to put the path vector on the end of the runway, which I'm just doing now. You can see, I'm just playing with my trim now because I want to go. Um, hands off stick so which is up a little bit path vector up a little bit power on a little bit I've lost too much power okay now I'm hands off the stick completely um, and just hands on the um, on the throttle so I'm pretty happy with that 83 knots no a little bit more power and so all I'm doing is touching the throttle at the moment I'm gonna need a little bit of left stick just to get back on in line so we've got our uh, path vector right on the edge of that runway there so that's where we're heading so all is well a double check everything is gear down yes our flaps down yes so we're in vehicle mode yes is water on yes everything's good so far we're going to keep in like this once we get nearer to the edge of the runway we are going to start lowering our nozzle and start trans start transferring to a uh, hover now as i said before this ot time appears to be bugged at the moment that makes this video so i hope i don't get problems with that end and a power of the engine but we'll see ideally we'd like to keep our here the engine speed up, um, below 100% but we'll just have to see how it goes right so it's coming in nicely now I'm gonna start coming off the power uh, uh, leaving the power is here so I'm gonna start moving the nozzle back just a little bit to slow down our speed let's try 70 degrees now our vertical velocity is increased, uh, uh, we want to uh, decrease it now, we're going down too fast. And we're going to trim that out. More downward nozzle, more power. Now it's a case of balancing our nozzle degrees, our power and our vertical velocity, which is a bit all over the place at the moment, I'm a little bit rusty, I'm not going to lie. Going to move to 85 nozzle or thereabouts. No, 80 looks like we're going to have to be. Right, now we're going to start trimming forward a little bit and trim that out. <laughs> we're going back up now. Come on, baby, go forward. It takes a bit of a balancing act. Okay. So it's trimmed forward, she's going to start moving forward again. Okay, I'm going to ever so slowly start to bring her down. Let me just get past, get past these lights first. I'm going to start introducing the stick. I tried to do all that with the trim and I was struggling. I'm going to start using the control stick now, so I'll get a bit more hands-on control. Okay. We're all doing well. I'm going to start bringing the throttle down a bit now, just to get a bit of vertical velocity. You can see our engine power is 95, so we're not exceeding the limits at all. Vertical velocity, 50 uh, feet per minute, so that's beautiful. I just want to land exactly still if I can, so just a tiny bit of upstick.
and that is us down, sir. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, so the reason we could use less than 100% there is because our weight. And if we check our weight out now, so let's go to the arming screen. Uh, we are right down at 16,000 pounds, so it made a huge difference. Uh, there's only one other thing that I would like to point out, uh, and that is regards your engine maintenance again. And it is um, how to tell if we are stressing the engine. Now, I'm not sure how well I'm going to tell. In fact, what I'm going to do is arm up some, with some weapons so I can purposefully show you how we're going to overstress the engine. So I've just armed up with a whole bunch of bombs. I'm going to be too heavy to vertically take off, but that's I'm doing it on purpose. So what I just want to show now is that if I put the nozzles up there and I go full throttle. So I'm 105%, 106, 107. Now if I go above 107%, I get my octagon or hexagon, sorry. Uh, and the higher I'm controlling the, the draw size of the hexagon with the amount of throttle that I'm adding. And if I add all the way, I get... Uh, let's try that again, shall we? So I'm moving stick forward, stick backward, stick forward, and we can go all the way up to the top like that. And let's try that again. Drawing my hexagon. Like that. Anyway, what the rule I'm trying to say is that the rule I've always been told is that never exceed two sides, more than two sides of the hexagon. If you exceed more than two sides of the hexagon, i.e. the hexagon gets bigger in size, then you are then damaging the engine, which comes down to what we were talking about down here, the, the thing that's not quite working at the moment. Uh, out of interest, the there is a letter inside the hexagon. If it's R, I believe you are over spooling the engine or uh, over revving the engine. Let me try again and over it. So I'm pushing the thrust lever up now. Oh, blast. I'm unable to um, go any higher at the moment. Let's try again. Um, I'm unable to rev any higher at the moment. But what I was trying to say, if I revved even higher and uh, uh, drew the complete side of the hexagon, then there would be a J inside it. That supersedes R. And the J means that the temperature is getting too high. Right. I know that was a bit long-winded, but there was lots of stuff I wanted to cover there. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I think I've gone over everything. So I hope that helps. And I'll see you later.